Hello my beautiful MK Love fam and welcome back. It has been three months since we've sat down and had a chat. There's been a lot going on. Before I get into today's video with my life update and telling you 11 things that 2019 taught me, I just wanna let you know that it was never my intention to take time off. It kind of happened. There was a lot that went down. I moved countries quite a lot this year. But when we made the last international move from Ireland back to Australia, it has taken us three months to find a home. So this year we've basically slept in 29 beds. Bed 30 is gonna be our home, which I'm so very excited about, but I'm gonna tell you more about that in a sec. So I feel like this video is going to be quite lengthy, so grab your cup of tea. I've actually got my flask here because usually when I have my, my usual cup, by the time I sip it and I've talked so much, it's cold, so I now have a flask. <laughs> All right, let's get into it because we have a lot to discuss. Okay, so the first lesson that I learned this year was that I actually manifested my dream career, which gave me the flexibility to travel and work anywhere in the world. <clears throat> if you're not familiar and you're new to my channel, this is your first video, you're like, holy crap, I thought you do like angel videos. No, there's more to my business than just that. So if you don't know, I am a childhood trauma healer. So I work with women online through a one-on-one -on -one online per personalized coaching program where I help them to heal their trauma and break the cycle of abuse in their family within eight weeks. So I began working with beautiful, beautiful clients who I just flipping love. And it gave me the freedom to choose where I want to live and work in the world. It's been a dream of my husband and mine to basically go to Bali. We have been, well, we've been together almost four years. When we met, we said, I wanna to move to Bali and I wanna work online. I wanna be that digital nomad kind of thing. Well, you know that song from the Pussycat Dolls? Be careful what you wish for, cause you might just get it. We got it. Um, and so we moved to Bali. We had organized to be there for five months. We were there for five weeks. We noticed as we got there, the veil lifted and we were able to see Bali for what it truly was. Now, this is just our experience. It wasn't Instagrammable. It wasn't what you usually see. It was really tough. The thing that made us leave after five weeks was the internet connection was so bad that whenever I was on video calls to my clients, it would drop out. And that is embarrassing as a business owner. That is like not okay in my books. It got to the stage where I was like, I can't do my job because of where we are. So we booked a flight and we went to Ireland. Now it was our plan to go to Ireland for July. Um, that's when I was going to meet all of Peter's family. Crazy things like we got married and I had only met his mum and dad at that stage. He has a whole extended family that I then later met. So I got what I wanted, but then I realized it wasn't what I had expected. I thought I would be fine to travel and move and live in these cute places and be like, oh my God, my loves, I'm in this place. I don't work that way and I figured that out the tough way. So number two, what I realized is that I need a solid foundation. I need a solid foundation in where I'm living because where you, when you're traveling so much, it's a constant root chakra blockage. The root chakra is your stability. It's your home. Without having a constant home and having to try and find a desk and to set my background up again and make sure that the room was energetically high vibrational and there wasn't like noise, like when we're in Bali, there's flipping roosters everywhere. I had to record meditations making a makeshift cubby with a queen size mattress on top of me and I'm sitting underneath sweating my butt off trying to record these meditations for my clients. It was just not working. And then we basically got to a point where we were trying to find what does home mean to us? We fell in love with Ireland. Um, we basically were traveling for seven months this year, which 
crazy because I've always wanted to travel. I hadn't traveled in like four years and then I did like four years of traveling in seven months. So that was crazy. Um, what else? Yeah, so we're basically just trying to find our home. We're now in Adelaide in Australia. Um, never been to Adelaide before, but I'll tell you more about how we chose that in a second. Okay, the next one, number three, is that my body was telling me that it's time for me to become a mother. And that was scary and exciting and it brought up so much shit. Oh my God, it made me go like, oh my gosh, I'm not at the level in which I thought I'd be in my business to be able to take time off to do that. Um, and I was able to communicate with my daughter who isn't yet conceived, uh, but she came to me when I was in Bali through really vivid, vivid dreams. Um, and get this, she communicated with me during journaling. I would play one specific song, which I would use as like the journal vibe song for my coaching clients. I used it. I journaled every journal every morning. It's 11 minutes and 11 seconds. And it was like her song. And whenever I'd play it, she would come to me and she would take over the pen as I'm writing. And I'm like, holy shit, am I making this up? Um, and what she told me was that she chose me to be her mom because she used to be a servant in her previous life. And because I'm a childhood trauma healer, she knows that she chose me and her dad, my beautiful husband, Peter, as the perfect parents to help her in this life. And that just blew me away. And that so many things kept happening. And I was like, oh my God, it's time to become a mother. I don't feel ready, but I am ready because uh, being a mom to me is like the most important role I will ever, I'm getting emotional talking about this. It's the most important role I will ever play because someone, who, for me, who grew up with a traumatic childhood, I never want my daughter to go through what I went through. And I know that I'm at a level where I have made peace with so much shit, but there's always things that come up as we go through different astrological transits. And I'm like, am I ready? I don't want to give this kid trauma. You know, I want her to be high vibrational soul. I want to show her how to do this, 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 and this. And when the contrast comes up, you do this. And I'm like, she's telling me I'm ready, but I don't feel that I'm ready. It just brought up a lot. So I f I'm kind of like prepping the foundations for that, trying to find our home, securing my business, um, going to be moving into group coaching by the end of 2020. There's just a lot going on. So yeah my daughter is communicating with me and she hasn't yet been conceived. I didn't even know that that was possible. Okay, that was a lot, wasn't it? The next one, number four, I became a millionaire this year. Yes, <laughs> but I didn't specify the currency in which I wanted it. We became a millionaire in Bali, uh, which is crazy. It's like just having like a million dollars in the pocket, a million here, a million there, a million there. And I was like, shit, I never specified that it needed to be in Australian dollars. So that's interesting. And that was my fault with the law of attraction because I knew that it was coming. I can feel that it is coming. I am putting the supports and structures in place in my business to basically deal with massive success. Um, and to have a team alongside me that can help me at times. I haven't got my team just yet, but I know that they're coming and I know that they're gonna come in 2020. But yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Number five was all about astrocartography. Now, you're probably like, what the flip is that now? So astrocartography is basically the study of astrology in different locations around the world. Basically, the time in which you're born gives you all of these lines that bring you different energy. That's why when you go to one place, you may have an experience and it can be really dark and gloomy. And then you go somewhere else and you're like, I feel so good. Like, it's interesting. So I've been learning about the different energy in different places. Um, which was really interesting because when I was in, we spent most of our time in Ireland and England this year, 
And when I'm in England, I used to live in England 10 years ago. So it was like a 10 year cycle finishing it off. Um, and when I used to live in London, I was on my Mars line and I'm an Aries sun sign. So Mars is my ruling planet. But if you're on the different sides of a special line, you will feel the energy in different ways. When I was in London over this side, it was more, I don't know, it was just much better for my soul. But when I was over on this side and I was closest to Dublin, it was a completely different aspect. And then when we were in Galway, it was a different line altogether. So we chose where we are in Adelaide based on astrocartography, finding a good line for my husband and a good line for me. It's so interesting because the things that have come up, because I'm living on a Neptune descendant line. Descendant basically means your relationships and Neptune is delusions, deception, spirituality, whimsical, feeling underneath the water. I chose it specifically because of um, an aspect to my chart. Um, but yeah, there's a lot into that. So yeah, basically it's like feng shui for geography. You know how you can feng shui your desk and your home and your front door and your living room and all of that kind of stuff. It's like feng shuiing energy that's, that you're gonna learn something from, basically. Um, okay, number six is that when we were in Ireland, I felt ancestral karma and pain on a level that I've never even experienced in my life. Um, it was quite traumatic because when we were in Galway, we went on a road trip about like two hours north from Galway. And I had this constant headache. I felt like when I was in Ireland the whole time, I had a constant headache. It just never went away. There were times, well, it did in times it did, but it was, it became so part of my normal life there that it was, it's just really sad. It just kind of was always there. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Um, when I was in mother nature, when we were driving, we were going around this roundabout and all of a sudden this energy just came into the car and it felt like it just, it actually got my head. It like hit me like a bus and I actually like cried out for help. Like it was like, ow, like, and normally like I feel pain. I'm like, oh, it hurts. And sometimes it makes my eyes water. This was so powerful. And then I was doing some research and it was pain that I felt from the 1700s. I was like, holy shit, my abilities are developing so much. I don't even know how to handle them. Because what I would usually do when I feel pain, other people's pain, like as an empath and clairvoyant, clairaudient, all that kind of stuff that I channel from other people, I go out into mother nature and it just washes my way, or washes my way, or washes away the pain and I recalibrate my soul back to the frequency of love, um, which is 432 hertz, which when you go out into nature, you feel that when you eat high vibrational plant foods, you, you feel that vibration. Um, so that was interesting to me. I'm like, I, I don't feel good anywhere. I thought being in a car would help me. I just put in headphones to try and change the state. No, I, yeah, that was really tough for me. Yeah, so that was a big one. And I was like, I don't know how to handle it. So if any of you know how to handle the energy of feeling stuff that happened years ago, like from the 1700s, what the actual F. <laughs> I just was like, I don't, I don't know how to handle this because what I usually do isn't working for this. And that was huge for me. Other thing that we noticed from traveling was water purity. Holy heck. In December last year, my taste buds changed so much that the water I was drinking, which was filtered water, um, I just taste, it just felt yuck. Like I felt like I was poisoning myself by drinking this water. So we started doing lots of research yeah, and we were distilling our water, trying to get rid of everything. Um, distilling basically takes the vitamins and the minerals, all the chemicals, basically everything out of it. It's got like a metallic kind of taste, but it was good for where I was at at that stage in my journey. It is my, my dream to go to Saudi Arabia and, and taste Zamzam water, which is the most high of, highest vibrational water on planet Earth. Um, that is on my bucket list and I cannot wait to go. It's one of the holiest waters in Islam. Um, 
So yeah, so what we started doing is when we were in Bali, you couldn't even drink the tap water. We would buy bottled water and it just was so disgusting that I, had, I just drank tea all the time to kill the taste of this horrible water. When we were in the UK, we were house sitting in, no, we weren't house sitting, we were in an Airbnb in, where were we? Winsford. Never even heard of Winsford, but it was the only place we could get a month's rental. Um, in all of England at the last minute, we were in on a houseboat in um, on the canals in London and we're like, I really want it here, but holy shit, it's so easy to spend money, especially if you're vegan. Oh my God. And we spent so much time at Lele's in South Clapton or Hackney, I can't remember where it is, but oh my gosh, if you're ever in London or you live in London, if you haven't been to Lele's, that woman is phenomenal. It's this cute little shop and she's just infuses all of her Italian little love into this big and creations and it is worth every single pound. So yeah, water was a big thing. Then my angels introduced me to Aura Liquid Gold, which you can use as like a little dropper to put into your water as you travel. You can use it to, um, to cleanse any water if you've distilled it then you can add it into it you can add it into your coffee if you're at a coffee shop and you don't have control over the water that you're drinking it basically deactivates any toxins in your water and mineralizes your water with 102 vitamins and mineral no is it just minerals it's the matrix of 102 minerals and I brought that and I was like, oh my God, this is such a game changer because I was even like, when we were in England, I was so desperate just to have ju just water because in Australia, if we want really, really nice water, I buy the pure AU water in the blue 10 liter things from Woolworths, but I couldn't find good water anywhere. It was just like the UK really was like, what the heck? I just can't drink this water. So yeah, learning a lot about water and learning a lot about the chemicals in water and what it does to your body. Um, but that's a whole nother topic. Number eight, my menstrual cycle began unsinking with the moon from traveling, being in different time zones. And when we were in England and Ireland, it was summertime. So the sun doesn't go to bed till 11 o'clock. And which means I'm going to bed and it's daylight and I've got my curtains to like block out the sun, but I don't get to see mama moon. And I was so sad. I was like, I don't get to see mama moon anymore. And I like to moon bathe, look at the moon, especially when it's a full moon and just like go for a walk on the beach. And, and mama moon helps to sync your menstrual cycle with the natural cycles of the moon. And I was noticing that I was having my period during a full moon and then which to me when i get my period i call that my balsamic moon and i was getting it during a full moon when i was meant to be like larger than life and all of this fabulous stuff and i just wanted to to curl up in a ball and i didn't want to talk to anyone i wanted to wear my baggy clothes um and that was really challenging and since being back in australia for three months i'm getting back into sync, um, still a long way off, but that was something that I didn't even consider about traveling, is that your menstrual cycle has stress from traveling and from being in different time zones and is trying to adjust with everything that you're doing. And she's kind of like, slow down, like this is not working. So that was really interesting and something that I didn't expect, but now I know I'm like, holy heck, that makes total sense. Number nine, I had two panic attacks this year. Never had a panic attack in my whole flipping life. And that was really a really difficult time because I have spoken to people who have been through it. Maybe I asked for it because I'd wanted to know what it would feel like working with clients who had experienced that. Um, I don't know, it just is really, it was so difficult. And every time it happened, I had this, um, this white jumper with black stripe on it and it would be like a high neck and every time it would happen i felt like i just need to take my clothes off and i'm like <gasps> and i'd have to open the window to to try and get some some fresh air in and it was scary like i was like peter was like what do i do i was like just don't touch me don't touch me open the window and i just need you to just sit next to me 
And that was really scary. And I was like, shit, something has to change. I need to get out of this toxic situation because it is not good for my soul. I am not in alignment here and I need to look after me and I need to become the leading lady of my life. You know, it's yeah, there is more to that story. But yeah, I had two panic attacks and I was like, fuck. I have to change something because there's something that is seriously wrong. I also did some research in that you can have panic attacks around different transits in your astrological chart. I don't understand enough about that. I'm still a student of astrology. <laughs> what else happened? Number 10, delusions and deceptions with family. I really saw a different side to people in my family. Um, there are two narcissists in my family. There is another one who has narcissistic traits and one of them who's a narcissist, I actually believe has traits of a sociopath, which is fucking scary. Um, that was huge. Um, it was crazy because around that time, I wasn't even researching sociopaths and all of a sudden, Shane Dawson's series on Jake Paul came up on my newsfeed and I'm like, I've heard of Shane Dawson, but I don't really know him, but I know he's very well respected. And I've watched Jake's videos before and I'm like, he's not really my cup of tea, but I understand why he is the way he is. Watched the whole series and I was like, oh my God. And that was like, just started an avalanche of learning more about sociopaths and it's very scary. Um, and I noticed from being in Adelaide because I'm on my Neptune line, which I told you about before, which basically removes the veil and it shows you your delusions and your deceptions with my relationships. And I saw a one particular relationship in with a family member. I saw it in a completely different way. And I was like, <sighs> I just heard that song. That don't impress me much. So you got the looks, but have you got the touch? So it was just, um, it made me see things from a different angle and I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this person anymore and I don't know how to deal with that because I just saw them for who they truly are and I was like, you have no empathy. What you're doing is not okay. I would never allow a friend to treat me that way. So why am I putting up with this shit with you? because we are related. And I got to the point where I was like, there are different boundaries now. I don't see family as the holy grail. I see if you're a good person and you um, truly give a shit about me, I will welcome you with open arms. I will give you all the time in the world with me. But if you're not, then I need to distance myself from you. And that was really hard to deal with. You know, I cried a lot over that. and. I'm still learning how to deal with this because this is new energy that I'm now seeing on, on this side. And the reason we didn't move back to Queensland is because in Queensland, in terms of astrocartography for me, that's on my Pluto line. Pluto is death, rebirth, massive transformation. And it also can bring more trauma with family. It, there's, it's so interesting. Whenever you're someone who has recovered from your childhood trauma, or maybe you are in the process of why is this, well, my zip is making the noise of someone who is healing their childhood trauma. No matter the work that you're doing, if the people in your family haven't made the improvements and haven't made themselves a priority, because that's what I say, it's like your childhood trauma was not your fault, but healing is your responsibility. And when they don't make that a priority and you are drawn back into that game, it's really difficult to deal with them. Um, and I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, well, I didn't want to move back onto that line, even though I love the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast. And that's where a lot of house sits are. <laughs> when we came to Adelaide, they were like non-existent. Um, but we're in a house sit right now. Um, but get the keys to our new house. Tomorrow, you're only a day away. All right, what happened? What else? 11, astrology, planning with astrology. I learned that there is a natural cycles and rhythms, same with the mama moon, but also, also, hold on. <laughs> but also with astrology too. And I learned that the divine time can come based on different things that have happened. So you've basically got your houses and there's 12 different houses. There's 12 areas in which you move through in your life every year. I realized 
from I don't know how it I worked this out but I was like you know I always seem to move around October um, September October and I was like I wonder why that is I realized that's when I have a transit to my fourth house of home and family and I was like oh that's so interesting so basically I started to learn about planning with astrology so that I can sync my business and my personal stuff up with what's going on and be like, okay, when is a good time to travel? Like really, okay, this month is a great travel when it moves into my fifth house of, you know, that childlike innocence, fun, joy, play, all of that kind of stuff. So that was really interesting for me. Um, I started learning more about my birth chart, found out by looking at my birth chart, I can tell there's trauma based on, um, yeah, I could tell by looking at my chart that if you have Pluto in your fourth house, it basically means that you could have childhood trauma resulting from the father. I was like, shit. I looked at my brother's chart. It was in it. I haven't found out the time my sister was born yet, but I'm sure it would be in hers. And somebody else I looked at too, they had that too. And I was like, how crazy that you can look at somebody's birth chart and tell if they've had trauma. If that's just one way to tell, but that was that blew my mind. Um, what else? I realized that around um, September to December is the time where I'm basically creating something new. In 2018, that's when I took three, two and a half months off and created my one-on-one -on -one online coaching program. This year, around that time, that's when I've been looking for our home. Next year is what I'm gonna be using that time. Now that I'm aware of it, I will be disappearing off social media and basically becoming like the hermit card in um, tarot. I have to be really quick, we're at 27 minutes. Um, so yeah, I'll be using that time to plan my group coaching to begin that in December, 2020. There's a lot going on. That's just like what I can share on social media. There's a lot more that happened that was more personal that I don't want to share, but that's where I feel comfortable. So basically 2019 was about finding my stability, getting married to the man of my dreams, learning all of these beautiful lessons and just knowing that Everything is truly working out for me. Anyways, my love, I hope this was helpful. Maybe you relate to some of the stuff that I was telling you about. I just wanted to let you know I'm so grateful for you. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for coming back after all of this time. I truly, truly appreciate you. And I want you to comment down in the comment section below and tell me what was your number one lesson of 2019. Number one lesson of 2019. Write it down in the comment box right now. Your number one lesson of 2019. That's all I have for you. Next video. Actually, I haven't told you. Weekly Angel Guidance is not coming back. I'm going to be changing the channel completely for 2020. I have some really amazing plans that just came to me from my beautiful angels recently, which I'm really excited about. Weekly Angel Guidance is going to disappear. It doesn't feel in alignment. If you have any suggestions on how I can incorporate tarot and astrology, please let me know because I haven't figured that out. Um, yeah, stay tuned for next video because I'm gonna be asking for your help. I would love you to submit videos. We're gonna be talking about what did you love the most about what you did in 2019? What do you forgive yourself for in 2019? And what do you commit to doing in 2020? So that video will be coming soon. And I hope that you love to jump on the bandwagon and join that because I'm going to be collecting all of your videos and popping them on my channel, collating so you can see all of our beautiful MK Love fam from the around the world. <clears throat> I have a sore throat now. This is the most talking I've done in a long time. Have an amazing day, my beautiful MK Love fam. Remember to look after yourself and just know 2019 was just basically laying the foundations because 2020 is basically showtime and I know some of you can feel it. Anyways, have an amazing day wherever you're in the world and I will see you next episode.